In this lecture, we're going to discuss the relationship between resistance and resistivity of a conducting material. So let's begin by looking at the following diagram of a section of a conducting wire. Let's suppose our conducting wire is cylindrical in shape, has a total length given by lowercase l, and has a cross-sectional area given by uppercase a. So let's actually discuss what takes place on the microscopic level when our single electron is traveling through our conducting wire as shown. So let's suppose it's traveling in the positive direction along our x-axis. So, these orange dots along with the blue dots are essentially the atoms of our conducting material. So we have the protons and neutrons found in the nuclei of the atom and we have the electrons which are orbiting those nuclei. Now, as you might know, atoms are mostly empty space and because the small size of our electron, this electron will have relative little difficulty in traveling through our conducting wire. However, it does experience difficulty and that's because if this electron gets close to either the protons or the electrons of the atoms composing our conducting wire, attractive and repulsive forces will be felt and these electrical forces will impede the flow of our electron as it travels through our our wire. So this effect, this impeding, impeding effect is essentially known as resistance. So once again, when electrons travel through the conducting materials, they feel attractive repulsive forces as a result of the atoms of our conducting material, so the protons and the electrons. Now these electrical forces will impede the flow of electron and this concept is known as resistance. It's given by a capital R. Now, resistance is not the same thing as resistivity, although these concepts are related as we'll see in just a moment. So, the resistivity of a conducting material given by the Greek letter rho is the ability of the atoms of that, of that particular conducting material to impede the flow of electrons. So, the higher our resistivity of our particular material, the stronger the electrons will be attracted to the atoms of that material and the more difficulty those electrons will experience in moving through that particular conducting wire. So, what exactly is the relationship between resistance given by R and resistivity given by rho? So it's given by the following equation. Our resistance given by R is equal to the product of rho, our resistivity, multiplied by the length of our wire divided by the cross-sectional area of that wire. So once again, our rho is the resistivity. It has units omega multiplied by meter the A is the cross-sectional area of the conducting wire given by meter squared and the L is the length of the conductor wire given by meters. So we see from this equation that the resistance is directly proportional to our length and the resistivity and inversely proportional to our area. So essentially, if we increase the area, we decrease our resistance because this electron has more space to navigate. However, if we increase our length, that basically means our electron has to travel through more of those atoms and so the resistance will increase. And we see if we increase our resistivity, we essentially increase the ability of those atoms of the material to attract that electron and so our resistance will increase. So let's look at the following example in which we're going to apply this equation. Calculate the radius of a copper wire that is needed to keep the resistance at 0 0.5 ohms if the length of the wire is 30 meters. Assume that our resistivity of the copper is given to be 1.68 times 10 to the negative 8 omega multiplied by meters. 
So we begin with this equation. We have to rearrange it and solve for our a. The a is equal to the product of this quantity, our rho, multiplied by l, divided by our r. So our rho is this quantity, our length is 30 meters, and our r is 0.5 ohms. We multiply, divide, and we get 1.008 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. So we're going to make the assumption that our wire is cylindrical. So that means the area is given by pi r squared. So we take this, solve for our r, we see the r is equal to the square root of the ratio of the area to pi. So the area was found in this part. We plug that in and we solve and we get about 5.7 times 10 to negative 4 meters is the radius of our conducting wire. Now, before we end this lecture, let's discuss one other concept. So this concept is essentially the opposite of resistivity. So this is known as conductivity. It's essentially the ability of the atoms to flow through our wire freely. So the conductivity of a material is given by the Greek symbol sigma. And sigma is equal to 1 divided by our resistivity given by rho. So we see that if our resistivity decreases, that means our conductivity increases. And that makes sense because if this decreases, the resistance decreases. And that implies that the electrons are able to flow more freely through our conducting material. So once again, this is simply the ability of the electrons to flow within our conductor. The higher this value is, the lower this value is, and the more able our electrons are to flow through that conducting material.